All right. Well, today on Pittsburgh Artist Studio, we have Uncle Dave Howard, and he is an artist, illustrator, and um, he's from Pittsburgh. Is that right, Dave? Yep. I live in New Kensington. New Kensington. Okay. So um, let's start. I'm going to start asking some questions here, and uh, let's find out a little bit more about your background and how you became an illustrator artist. I always say artist because I think we're still artists, even if we illustrate. So <laughs> I, I wear a lot of hats and illustration is just one of the many I wear. OK, so <laughs> tell us a little bit about what you do do. Um, I, uh, I teach pottery, stained glass, painting, drawing, uh, all kinds of stuff down here in my art studio. Uh, basically, if it's an art form, I will teach it to you. And if I can. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> if I, I, I knew this was going to happen. This is, uh, let me just turn that down. I once was born a long <laughs> ago. <laughs> yeah, that's always my kids will call me when <laughs> I'm doing a, some kind of video or something. So, um, well, now you said you teach pottery too, so that's pretty yeah, interesting. Yeah, I teach I teach pottery, uh, stained glass, painting, drawing. Uh, we also have uh, ceramics down here in my studio where you can paint your own ceramic figurines, just like uh, the ye olden times of the 80s that people love those little uh, ceramic figurines. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have them because everything old is new again. Yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. we have a bunch of stuff from all for all ages. Is It's uh we have some stuff for kids and adults. Uh, so it doesn't matter who you are. We have some sort of class uh, for you. And mm -hmm. even kids can do pottery. I'm, I was kind of right. surprised. The youngest I've had was three years old uh, do pottery. Oh, okay. Well, um, you'll have to give me your uh, link to your, or your address yeah. for your studio. So people, if they're interested in taking one of your classes, uh, have you have you done things with COVID? Uh, has it been a little bit restrictive since that? Uh, at first it was. Uh, uh, I was shut down for like two or three months there last year from March mm -hmm. to about May. Uh, once once May came around, we were allowed to be yellow where I was allowed to do some things. Uh, what what uh, basically I had to think as an artist, you had to think outside the box anyway. So I started thinking outside the box like all these restaurants are having um, outdoor seating and they're allowed to do what they're allowed to do because they have an outdoor seating uh, place. So I had this little um, like a garage lean to uh, just a like a little lean to metal garage. And I asked my brother, can you just like screen that in and we could turn it into a studio? So mm -hmm. we started uh, screening it in and turned it into a studio and I started teaching outside in the fresh yeah. air. So mm -hmm. that way I can get away with uh, the cover restrictions. I wouldn't, I would, you know, cause inside I was only allowed to have like a handful of people at a time, you mm -hmm. know, how all the COVID restrictions oh, right, at, first, right. at first it was, um, well, so we yeah. have the outdoor seating. So now that we have the fresh air and now that the restrictions are being lifted a little bit more, I, I could pretty much run my studio the way I was running my studio now with just a you know, yeah, face mask or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right now I don't have anyone in here, but the, the dog. Um, th this is Snickers. <laughs> How cute. They, yeah, he, he, uh, he, uh, he owns the store. I, I just uh, work for him. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so this is, this is the usual crowd Monday through Friday. It's usually just me and the dog doing uh, Missy Laney stuff at the studio until school's out. Um, then I have a handful of, of like kids that come down after school to do whatever they want to do. And, uh, yeah, cause during the day, this is my usual, um, you know, my usual customer workload right here. Yes, I understand. He he definitely puts me to work though. <laughs> but yeah, we we have all kinds of fun down here. As you can see, uh, it's kind of colorful. We are yeah. the we are the rainbow building on Fifty Six. The whole the whole wall over here is rainbow, as you can see. Yeah, that's nice. Inside the store is rainbow. The outside of the store is rainbow. Uh, so if you're driving down uh, 56, uh, you will see the a huge rainbow building with lots of artwork attached to it. Nice. Um, people have dubbed it the Randy Land in the Woods. <laughs> have you been to Randy Land? 
No, no, I haven't. No, I have no idea what that yeah, is. It's, oh, it, it's a, a very colorful place, kind of like me, but it's uh, more famous than me. And it's like downtown Pittsburgh. So oh, okay. I'm, yeah, I'm, in the, I... I'm, in, I'm in the woods of New Kensington. Like, actually, I'm kind of, they probably consider me lower borough. But mm -hmm. uh, New Kensington is the biggest city that's near me. Okay. Yeah, I I may have heard from my daughter. She I think she went there at one one point. Now that you're saying it was in Pittsburgh, but I have never been there actually. Yeah. So um, yeah. well, you know what? Let me ask you too. Like, what uh, type of illustrations and artwork do you do personally? I um I mostly I got my start with uh, children's books. I started writing children's books um, back in. I think my first book was 2009 and it was ladies day to play. It was, uh, written, um, my niece was pregnant for her first child. And I, I just had this poem in my head and I started drawing the pictures to the poem and I just kind of threw it together and got it self published just for fun sake. And I mm -hmm. think there's only six original copies of that book. Cause I had to give it to my niece, my mom, my aunts, you know how it is. Um, oh, there's, yeah. only, there's only like six original copies of that book. Mm -hmm. And it was a baby shower gift for her. Um, unfortunately, her baby died of SIDS, that sudden oh. infant death syndrome. She only was like two months old oh, when my she goodness. passed away. Um, oh. It was a little bit before Thanksgiving when she passed away. Oh. And I didn't get to see the baby because she lived in New Jersey. Oh. That kind of crushed me because... You know, I, I was very young whenever she came into the world, the, the, the niece, not, not, not the, the baby that passed away. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. was like 15 years old when she was my, the one who made me Uncle Dave. Um, my brother, of course, had kids young and then I, they were being raised in my house with my parents. Uh, so I was like 15 years old helping changing diapers at the time. And so that my niece was kind of like my daughter. Um, uh -huh. that whenever she had a kid and it passed away, that just like that crushed. Me. Oh yeah, that's horrible. And I went back and I rewrote the book and I did some. I fixed the pictures and made more pictures and I reproduced the book like a second version mm -hmm. of it and gave it to her and I dedicated it to the baby in her memory. Oh. And then I uh, got it published. It, uh, the friend of a friend, yeah, through basically through word of mouth, uh, mm -hmm. sent me to the publisher. I got published and I got uh, USA Best Books, International Best Books, Mom's Choice Award. I was in Barnes and Noble. I was on TV, the newspapers, the whole nine yards with this lady's day to play. Oh, and nice. uh, so I dedicated it and I also donated a dollar per book that sold to Sid's Research. Um, nice. and that's, that's basically one reason why I am uncle Dave It's in memory of my, my, uh, baby niece that died. So, mm -hmm. you know, everything that I do is yeah, uncle Dave's books, uncle Dave's art studio. I keep, uh, the pen name uncle Dave in her memory because that's pretty much what started this whole thing. It's a, yes, I, mm -hmm. I was an artist, but I wasn't an artist artist. You know, I, mm -hmm. I did things, I, you know, Mostly, I was uh, full time working in a factory for twenty some years, so I didn't even have oh, wow. artistic mm -hmm. things job wise. Other than after she, uh, after I had the books, I started doing craft shows. That was it. You know, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until mm -hmm. just a couple of years ago I, I got the, the, yeah, got the store, and I started working on the store. Nice. Well, you've really come a long way, that's for sure, you know. Uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, like you just don't realize you have that art in you, you know. Um, I've, I've, I was pretty lucky myself. I mean, I started when I was younger, so uh, I just kept at it here and there, and then eventually I, I just do it kind of full-time, more or less. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of nice. So, so now we know that how you got into the illustration, that's kind yep. of nice. And uh, so, like, do you use any special techniques or resources in order to do your art other than? I, yeah, I probably, I, I'm not the usual artist, which I, th I don't think there is a quote unquote usual artist. I think they're right. all weird. Um, <laughs> I, 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 gladly, I, I gladly will say that, yes, I'm, I'm weird and I, I will wear the weird hat until I die. 
Um, in fact, one of my friends oh. says, well, you're not weird. You're eccentric. I was like, oh, that's a fancy way of saying weird. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but uh, so I, my medium is a little bit different than everybody else's because I, I use a hodgepodge of all my, like I told you, I wear many hats. So mm-hmm. whenever I first started, my favorites, whenever I was in high school, and, uh, I went to Orange to Pittsburgh and California University. So mm-hmm. my favorite things was I like to do color pencils, oils, acrylics, watercolors, that type of thing. And mm-hmm. I loved all of it. Mm-hmm. So this little new thing, I know that I'm, you could tell I'm already aging myself with my beard. This new thing came out called digital illustration. Um, and then mm-hmm. iPads and whatnot and Photoshop came out. So what I did, I, I loved the computer from the second that I touched it. <clears throat> excuse me at the Art Institute of Pittsburgh. Um, I'm like, oh, that, look, I could, I could, I could do stuff that I can't do on paper. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I can add layers. I can copy and paste. I can move this from here to there, and I can undo. Which was to me as a. I also, I'm dyslexic, ADD. I was in special ed classes, so for someone like me that has learning disabilities to be able to, instead of crumpling up the piece of paper and throwing it away, Mm -hmm. just to push a little button that says undo, control, Mm -hmm. alt, Z, you know. Right. (laughs) Right. It's amazing because that that, that took my art from okay to wow, this is kind of cool because it made my life easier. And so Mm -hmm. I started using Photoshop and that type of thing. And then I got iPads. Um, iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil, and I started to actually draw straight on the the screen with the layers. And then some of the apps look like watercolor, some of the apps look like oil or whatever. And mm-hmm. sometimes I would throw in those, you know, quote unquote real art that yeah, you because know, a lot mm-hmm. of my friends yell at me for using di- digital illustrations because it's not. I'm like not real art. Um, I don't know if you notice or not, but oh, it's the art. You it's use your hand. hand. It's not you. Didn't, you don't just push a button on the machine and the machine does it. You actually, you know, draw. Yeah, on you're it. drawing. Yeah, it's definitely an art yeah. piece. I, I found that. Uh, well, I illustrated a few books for my daughter, and I started out doing it on um, painting. You know, like an acrylic, and it was, mm-hmm. it wasn't very good. Whenever you, you know, actually publish the book, yeah. and then I got the iPad, and I thought, whoa. What a difference. And I mean, you're still drawing. You're still. You know, you know, you know what the, the huge, the biggest advantage of using your iPad is because, you know, like just what I just said, crumpling up a piece of paper. So right. what if you're if you're illustrating a book the old fashioned way, you have to lay out the paper to include the words, mm-hmm. the, the word space. You have to know what the, what it's going to say on that page and right. you need to design your drawing around the words and. You know, it's, so if you're going to do that old fashioned school, you have to do a lot of back work and a lot of planning and sketching. And it'll right. take you forever to do one illustration for exactly. one page. Whereas uh, digital illustration, whenever you, you, you can go ahead. I, I, that's why I like, I like to get, I can get my, my ideas out fast. Because exactly. if it's not out of this brain onto the piece of paper, it's lost into cyberspace and it will never come back. If it's not mm-hmm. out of this thing here. Right, it right. To, it has, as soon as it comes here, it has to go there. Like, right. Or it's lost forever. Into oh, yeah. Oh, life. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. So what, what the, the, the iPad does, it allows you to, once you have done your full-blown illustration and you're like, okay, this is what the author wants. You can move your picture around and make space for the, the, without redoing the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, the yeah. other thing is that I found out that is awesome for uh, for me whenever it comes to working with authors because I also I do my own, but I also illustrate for other authors. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to working with other authors, the computer actually helps me because this is what usually happens. Okay. I, whenever I read a story, I have a vision in my head, 
to uh, what whenever I read it, I saw what I want to draw and I draw it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I envision this this girl with brown eyes and, and and you know with a pink dress and the whole nine yards. And I see her doing whatever the author tells me that she's doing. I'm like, mm-hmm. I have this, or that this is this is the girl. I like I don't know this girl, but I see her in my mind. Mm-hmm. Then I hand her the proof and she's like, Can you make the dress purple? Can you mm-hmm. can you change her hair color to blonde? Can mm-hmm. you change? Can you move her over over there? Can you add this ear? <laughs> Isn't that can, awful? That's what happens. Can you do this? Can you do that? And then and because if that was true with old fashioned, oh, yes. crumple, crumple that bad boy up, throw it away, mm-hmm. and redo it. Or whereas with the iPad, you're like. <laughs> I can just go in there and go, oh, I can replace this color with that color. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's not a problem, right? I don't have to change the drawing. I just replace the color with the color. Oh, right. she wants me to move that girl. I can, you know, uh, select her and move her over and plop her down to where she wants to go. Exactly. And then I can I can add like the layers. I can add whatever she wanted me to add. I can add it onto a layer and move it around. And I could keep every little element of the illustration on its own separate layer. Mm-hmm. That way, if the author says, can you do X, Y, and Z? I'm like, oh, I'll just go to this layer, move it, and forget about it. And right. Instead of redrawing the whole thing. And it has sped up um, the illustration business like tenfold for me to take me and for me it took me before a whole stinking year to illustrate a children's book now I could probably do it in a month or two Oh, well, that's nice. It you know, still takes me a little longer because I'm yeah. working on one now and I'm still, you know, like it, it time wise, it's just, you know, trying it, to, you know, from, from the time it's up here to the time it's down there that yeah, it, it does speed it up because otherwise yeah. you'd be crumpling up that piece of paper. Well, I've over. crumpled quite a few. <laughs> There's no undo in the real world. That's and right. Like, that's it. There's no I mean, copy and paste either. Right. Exactly. <laughs> It's great that computers were designed in some oh, ways, you know. And the that we have that. that the one time I, I there's this new app. It's called Assembly, which is kind of like a, like a cheap cheaper version of Adobe Illustrator, where it, you draw with shapes and stuff and lines and shapes and stuff. So mm-hmm. you don't really make brush strokes, and it's just shapes. And I used this uh, thing. It's called uh, like I said Assembly, and I was just using it as a really quick sample tool it's like this is because the the author had they didn't give me much time i was like okay this is what i envisioned for your book i just basically used it to do a storyboard that Mm -hmm. i wasn't planning on using that as the final project i was just this is what i plan on drawing i just really crudely used shapes to draw you know her Mm -hmm. characters and she's like i like that can you keep that i'm like you, you you like I was like I, I did that in like like an, I did the whole book in like a day. Uh-huh. I did the whole storyboard in a day. Uh-huh. And she's like, I like it just as uh-huh. is. I'm like, are you, <laughs> what Isn't that, that, that's you're, wow. Yeah. You're, I'm speechless. You you are you kidding me? It's like I, I wasn't even planning on using it. It's like this. I mean to me it's like it looks, I, I, you know, it's its own style, which, you know, people, that's other people that my friends like. Uncle Dave doesn't have a style. No, I don't. I have many styles. Like, so yeah. a lot of my friends, they draw and paint one Certainly. way. And you could tell if you go into a museum and go, oh, that's uh, so-and-so's painting. I know, because you know, I know I could see a clear across the room, that's so-and-so's painting because I've seen so all the other so-and-so's paintings. Mm-hmm. To me, if you look at one of my paintings and then you're looking at like if you come to my gallery, which is like as I have the studio has some of my artwork up, up there, um, mm-hmm. some of the artwork up there. Uh, if you look around and you're like, oh, that's kind of neat. Who did that? I did. And you're like, oh, what about that? I did that. But they're like two way different styles. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. I, 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 I whatever I'm feeling at that moment, that's there isn't. That's, that's me, you, too. I, yeah, you really can't yeah. look at my pictures and go oh yeah that's an uncle day yeah you can't you can't do that i mean unless you look some of my uh like the children's books which is completely different stories this children's books have 
well, most of them, with exception that that last one I was telling you about, Assembly, they mm-hmm. have Uncle Dave style, which they're all the the same like cartoony type of thing. And there's some of my books have reoccurring characters, so they all kind of have to look kind of like you know like Simpsons, mm-hmm. but not mm-hmm. you know my version of cartoons. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you can probably look at my children's books and go, yeah, that's an Uncle Dave book because I yeah I meant to do that. Mm-hmm. Whereas my own personal artwork, you couldn't tell which one was yeah, on right. The right. Um, the books, yes. yeah. <laughs> I experiment in everything, you know, I mean, yeah. I don't just keep it as, as yeah. one That's thing. That's one of the reasons know. why I wear way too many hats is because yeah. before I went to California university, uh, I, I would, would be taking everything that said art and my mom, my mom, God bless her heart. She's like, Dave, you have three studio classes in the semester. I'm like, yeah. And do you know what studio classes are? I said, yeah, it's like an hour ish out of my time. She said, no, 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 no. Studio means big projects, Dave, big projects. <laughs> you have three of them in a semester. I'm like, yeah. And I have ADD. If mm. I don't have three projects going on at the same time, I'm not going to get none of them done. Mm-hmm. And that's just the same thing with here is that, be, I, like I told you, pottery, stained glass, painting, drawing. Because mm-hmm. I, I do have a extremely short attention span. And mm-hmm. if I if something starts frustrating me, I have to walk away and do something, something else. There. Well, you know, it's it well, for attention deficit, because my daughter has that also, my youngest daughter. And uh, they always had told me that something where she can focus would be best for her. And like art, uh, she became a chef at one point. Now she's into uh, studying art and dance. And I think that that is really important for a person that has the attention deficit. I think I had it but back then. They didn't. They didn't yeah, say. You know. The thing that uh, I just found out I had. I'm on the spectrum. I, I just found out I'm autistic because. Oh wow. Um, yeah, they didn't know what autism was back in the eighties. They barely knew what dyslexia was back in the eighties. The yeah. problem with, with my school was they didn't know how to teach me. They just took me in a room with a bunch of other kids. They didn't know how to teach mm-hmm. and I was too smart for the special ed class, but I couldn't pass the mainstream class. Right. You know, yep. Cause they did not, they didn't know what was wrong with me. It's like mm-hmm. this kid, he's slow. He, he can't read. He can't write. He, mm. he he stutters. We don't know what to do with this kid. We're just going to mm-hmm. stick him in a room with a bunch of other kids that we don't know. Which the thing is, that is I was way too smart for a special ed class, and I couldn't pass the mainstream classes. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of wow. like See, stuck in limbo. Yeah. And with uh, with mm-hmm. one of my uh, uh, friends' kid got diagnosed with Asperger's, which is not a thing now. It's autism. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I knew the kid. I'm like, what is this? What is mm-hmm. what is Asperger's? So I started reading. And I was like, oh my gosh, that just that describes me to a T. To mm-hmm. a T. Um, I was nonverbal until I was five years old. Oh wow! And wow. I mean, if you ask my yeah. dad, my, my dad would say this to you. Yeah, he wouldn't say a word. Now I can't get him to shut up. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, you know, that's I mean, that's the truth. They put you in. And that's how I feel with my daughter. Now, like she's in college now taking tests and she just does not do well on tests, you know. Yeah. And I mean, and she gets so upset with herself. And I says, look, you just don't get upset about it. You know, just do what you can. She's like in they have like a special uh, group for people that have those kind of issues and things. So the professors know, but they really don't help you out. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the thing is back in the eighties, uh, the, the teachers were set in their ways. The thing is yeah. that if the teachers would just bend a, a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. Because oh, what, I always struggled with that. What, too. Was, what was the thing that really irritated me whenever I, cause I was started, uh, they put me in 50, 50, they put me in 50% quote unquote normal mainstream and then 50 percent mm-hmm. learning disability slash uh, special education mm-hmm. whenever i was in those and i was struggling the, the thing is that well where i was struggling i i knew the answer to the, the question but i spelled it wrong and they still marked me wrong 
mm-hmm. with because of my dyslexia. Mm-hmm. I, I could I couldn't spell anything to save my life. Honestly, no. I had a gun to my head, and you asked me to spell something. If it's not four letters or Mississippi, you go and pull the trigger. Or my mm-hmm. name. If it's not four letters, my name or Mississippi, you're going to pull the trigger and I'm dead because I'm not going to be able to spell nothing. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. You, you should see my Google get... search. <laughs> What's that? You should see my Google search. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All the words I don't know how to spell. Oh, well, sometimes it corrects it, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't do sometimes too good. Sometimes I'm like searching, trying to figure out the word, and even Google's like, I have no clue what you're trying to spell here, Dave. Like, uh, uh, you're trying to do it phonetically. And of course, English is not all phonetic. It's well, like that's, these that's letters true. that aren't supposed to be there, like cough. I mean, what the heck is a GH doing in an F sound? Right. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Yeah. All right. Language. That was always an issue, you know. But. Well, um, I guess we could kind of wrap this up and just okay. say, uh, like, I guess, I guess you don't really have a creative block. I mean, you seem to always. Uh, have yeah, something. sometimes I do have creative block. And uh, what I usually do well with the writing side, I'll give this little tidbit with the writing side. I always ask myself questions. So, you know, who, what, when, where. And then the biggest one that usually motivates me to to write is, what if? What if this happened? What if that happened? What if this happened? Now, whenever mm-hmm. it comes to the artistic side, I force myself to do five minutes a day. So what happened, actually, my, like I was telling you about my mom. My mom passed away in 2017. Uh, mm-hmm. She had ovarian cancer, and it just mm-hmm. went through wow. her like wildfire in 2017, which was just a couple, like a week after we got married, Um, me and my wife got married a week after we got married. Um, And I, I was the baby of the family and she was the one fighting tooth and nail at the school. She's the one who was teaching me at home. She was, yeah, of course it was a devastating blow to me. Oh, sure. And I, I couldn't function. You know, I, I couldn't, yeah, I didn't even want to get out of bed. And one of my friends, you know, yeah, thank you. You know, my friends, she told me, she says, Dave, it's like you can't you can't let it get to you. You have to at least at least try. Yeah. To, to just force yourself to draw something. Yeah. Five minutes. Just give yourself five minutes. And if, if you you know, if just force yourself to draw something for five minutes, and after five minutes you could stop and do something else. And then I was like, I don't even know where to start. Okay, this is this is this is actually what happened to one of my books. You know, sometimes the story of my books is, is the be- the story behind the book is actually better than the book itself. Mm-hmm. Oh. So what happened is uh, my friend says, "Well, try something easy. Try to draw like the alphabet, uh, something that starts with the letter A. Mm-hmm. Five minutes. Draw something that starts with the letter A." Then the next day, draw something that starts with the letter B. Work your way all the way down the alphabet five minutes a day. Force yourself. And I'm like, okay, uh, I think I can handle that. So I started drawing, you know, ants on apples. You know, mm-hmm. I draw, I drew a picture of an ant on an apple. And I, and I, and I, as you know, I have, I have like over 3,000 fans now on my Facebook page. Wow. So I, I started posting these little, drawings every single day mm-hmm. whatever i drew that day i posted it on facebook and people are like oh that's that's a cute little drawing and by the time i got to like hey people are like when's the book coming out i'm like what book what are you talking about she's like this is the alphabet book when's the book coming out i'm like this is not meant to be a book and yeah so by the time i got to idea book, that yeah but, well the funny <laughs> thing is that by yeah, yeah. then Whenever I got to K, it, people were starting commenting on um, the drawing, saying, "Well, you forgot, you know, you know this thing. Or, this also starts with that letter." Because uh-huh. by the yeah, you know, by the time I got that far, I was putting a bunch of things that started with the letter, not just one thing. I was putting lots of things that started. Yeah. With the and they're like, "Oh, you forgot this. You forgot that. You like you you forgot that this or that or." And I, and I, so whenever I would do it, I would start adding, um, I would start adding 
more to it. So by the time I got to Z, I had all these suggestions of things that I forgot the first time around. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should make a book out of this. So, you know, then I started doing the letter, like the letter A, and then adding all the stuff that I had forgotten on the A page, the A, the first A picture, worked mm-hmm. my way all the way to Z of all the stuff that I had forgotten that people had suggested to draw. Then I'm like, okay, now I had to write. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna have to write something. I was like, how am I gonna write the alphabet? I mean, yeah, I was like, I was like this is the alphabet, and then it just it flowed. Mm-hmm. You know, A is for ants and apples and alligators too. You know, it, it, it was like, oh my gosh, here it comes, mm-hmm. here it comes, and it just I wrote like straight through the alphabet, wow, uh, every single page, and, and and what people loved about it because I kept on asking the kids, can you think of something? And yeah, you know, so there was an interactive book that not uh-huh. only that they have to find the things that start with the letter, mm-hmm. that forces them to think of stuff that begins with the letter. I had this one person said that they got they bought the book and it took the. Whoop, are you still there? Oh, I'm still here. Hold on. We lost you. Uh, oh, there you are. Oh, there you are. Okay, oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> so it, yeah, I had uh, people saying that when they bought the book, it took them to hours to read it i'm like mm-hmm. it's a 50 some page book and it took them two hours to read the book because the kids were like stopping at every single page pointing out the things that started with the letter and then they were telling their parents oh he forgot yeah. something he forgot this he should have he should have drawn that because mm-hmm. on the page it asked the kids can you think of anything uh-huh. And it, it sends you to the next letter, and then they're like, "Oh, this is this is a baseball bat. That's a baseball. That's a bed. That's a boy." You know, and they're like, "Oh, oh," and he forgot something. Uh huh. You know, so he Uncle Dave should have drawn that, and they said it took him two hours to read a fifty-page children's book. I was like, <laughs> "That is a win for me." Yeah. Because that exactly <laughs> was what when after I had finished it, I'm like, and what was perfect about the book. Because my mom, like I told you, I was a learning disability, and she was the one who was teaching me. I dedicated the book to her, mm-hmm. and this is a book that teaches kids. And like this is this is just perfect all over because right. she was the one who taught me my ABCs, and here I'm teaching, teaching kids their other their ABCs. Right, and it's, dedi- and it's dedicated to my mom. I'm like. Wow. Whoa! And it's called "You Is for Uncle Dave," and and it's 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 so cool. Oh, that's yeah, great. yeah. If you if you wanted to go and uh, like uh, visit my uh, web page, it's just Uncle Dave's Art Studio, like it's my art studio dot com. Uh-huh. Um, I'm on Facebook, Uncle Dave's Art Studio, also. So okay. those are the two places you can find me. I'm on Instagram, and the whole nine yards is Uncle Dave's books. And so I'll have you, the links. Yeah, I'll have those links in the bottom here. Basically, if you okay. Google Uncle Dave Howard or Uncle Dave's books or Uncle Dave's art studio, you will find a million and one things about me. Okay. And the Rainbow Building on Fifty Six. We're actually having a arts festival tomorrow here oh, nice. at my at my place. We're having uh-huh. a bunch of vendors come, and uh, we're having an arts festival. So we're going to have a a party down here. You're more than welcome. I don't know how far you are from New Kensington, but if you want to come, you can come. <laughs> I'm far. <laughs> where are you at? I'm. A, I don't know if you know where Century Three Mall. <gasps> Century I'm over that Three way. Chevrolet, Lebanon, yeah. Pittsburgh. They need to well, close them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Century Three is like no a longer. Land but... of a thousand and one potholes is where you live. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, like I told you, I, I was born and raised in Mongahela, um, which okay. is not that far. Right. Yeah, Washington yeah. County. I was not. I was born and raised in Mongahela. So, yeah, Center 3 was my stomping grounds in the 90s. Yeah. Whenever I had my driver's license, that's where I went. I, yeah. I lived at either Century 3 or South Hills Village. Yeah. Or both. Yeah. Well, South Hills Village is still there, but... Uh... Century three is like desolate. No, no. they they I don't think there's anything left in that. The last time I was nothing. Down, nothing it's all there. boarded. It's boarded yeah. up. It, that's just sad. <laughs> yeah, well, I am close to Hobby Lobby, and that that's always a yeah, plus it's like 
five minutes for me, so uh, it's nice. Uh, yeah, well, next time I'm down there, you're gonna have to you have to come. Say yeah, that. let me know. We'll meet. We'll meet up. <laughs> uh, I love Hobby Lobby. That's like one of my favorite. Oh, I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, if you know, it's not. I love Hobby Lobby. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, me too. I uh, most of my stuff is from Hobby Lobby. Um, so except for my cameras and things like that, I, you know, I ordered a lot of stuff on Amazon too. Oh, I'm an Amazon guy too. Like yeah. basically if Hobby Lobby doesn't have it, Amazon will. And uh, there's the other one is uh, called Blick um, and they yeah. have a lot of art supplies from Blick. Um, yeah. So uh, then the ceramic stores like Pitt they, Pittsburgh has some ceramic stores that I had to, but those are the, those are it. Uh, Hobby Lobby, Amazon, Blick and the ceramic places. Yeah. Cause well, I've not been to the Blick uh, uh, in uh, Shady Side. Uh, I used to have. There used to be one. In the, pardon me. It's very small. It's tiny. Yeah. Well, that I haven't been there because I I heard the parking is crazy. Oh, you had to park on the street. Yeah, and uh, I used to like going to Utrecht. That was in um, South Side, mm -hmm. and then they moved that over to Blick. So. I order a lot from Blick online. Yeah. It's so much easier than driving to Shady Side. Oh, there, yeah. there's, there's only like one thing that I actually will drive to Shady Side for, and that's uh, clay, um, because the the shipping on clay is outrageous. Like it, oh, it it's like it's like twenty bucks for fifty pounds of clay, but oh, wow. the shipping is another twenty or thirty dollars for shipping. So I would gladly drive the shady side for thirty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can hit that, I guess, pretty easily too. You know, it's you only, come down twenty eight. Yeah. The only problem with that is uh, parallel parking with my company van. <laughs> oh yeah, that's yeah. All right. <laughs> that is a beast. <laughs> yeah, I can understand. I can understand. So well, it's, it's been uh, awesome talking to you. You have well, any questions nice. that I forgot to answer? I think we have covered quite a bit, and I'm really happy that we did this. It was a great interview. I appreciate it. Well, Snicker says you didn't disturb him too much. Oh yeah, he's cute. Now is that a Snicker doodle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah he is a he's a yeah his name is snickerdoodle um he's a golden doodle so okay, golden, he's, the, yeah. he's uh, the perfect dog for an artist he's a, a doodle uh -huh. oh. <laughs> but the funny thing is that whenever we got him he as you can see he's snickerdoodle colored he's got we, we call it cinnamon sugar because he has like a little bit of red in there, a little bit of cinnamon in his sugar, and he does, he's also sweet, as you can tell. Yeah. Oh so yeah, he weird. looks like he's adorable. Uh, he is the store mascot. So if you if you come Monday through Friday, you probably will see him here at the studio. Um, he greets everybody. He's like my Walmart greeter. Uh, everybody loves to pet the puppy. He's only um one years old, so he, everybody loves to pet the puppy, and he loves yeah. to kiss, give kisses, and huggies. Aww. I, just back from vacation, so he's being super clingy today. Um, oh, so okay. Yeah. Want me out of the flight because we were on vacation for a whole week, so that's why he's uh, uh, out on my lap. Yeah. Right now. Oh, I go out for a few minutes, and my dog's like nuts <laughs> when I get yeah, out. Well, I, I, yeah, I've been cleaning around the studio before I, I, I logged in today. And I came in and he's like acting like I, I left him for another whole stinking week. I'm like, I was only gone for like an hour outside, dude. He's like, Why uh -huh. And he's like, well, you left me for a whole week. I don't want you to do that again. Yeah, they don't want you to leave them. Yeah. He's so. he's well, cute. thank you very much for this thank opportunity to, to share my art. Um, like I said, my art is on my Facebook page and my web, web pages, which I'll give you all the links for that. Uh, okay. and, and my books are on my web page. And Awesome. Uh, I'll, I'll share those links with you. And uh, I, and if you want to come down to New Kensington, you can actually see my artwork in real life. Yeah. Uh, and you could take pottery classes or stained glass or painting or drawing or, you yeah, know. All my stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thanks again, Uncle Dave. It was a pleasure. Yeah. And uh, until next time, we'll see everyone. And uh, bye. Bye.